This is modafinil. It's a narcolepsy medication, but it's also a very popular nootropic. I'm going to show you how to make modafinil because I think that the procedure is rather interesting and therefore I'm going to do it. It is legal for me to make as long as it is not intended for human consumption or for selling it, but legality depends on location, so I don't want to take any responsibility. To make modafinil you are going to need more chemicals than I could fit on the screen, but I listed all of them. The first step is going to be simple. You need thiourea, benzhydrol, distilled water and this massive flask. With big amount of chemicals I always weigh them out directly in the flask, so we began by weighing out 130 grams of benzhydrol. Benzhydrol is a wax-like solid and it smells interesting. We went past the mark we aimed for, but this doesn't matter at our scale. The scale was set to zero and we added the thiourea. 65 grams were used. This represents a small excess. Only mixing two powders is not really going to help, therefore we need a solvent. We used 330 grams of distilled water. To make the powders react, everything was placed on the hot plate and I even added an electric thermocouple. The hot plate was set to 85 degrees Celsius with the thermocouple inside of it. You don't want to heat the solution too much. I filmed the time lapse, but up until this moment nothing really happens, which was to be expected. The benzide roll melted, but nothing is going to happen until we add the special sauce. I am slowly going to add 48% hydrobromic acids until we obtain a completely clear solution. As you can see, we are still left with an emulsion of benzide in water, and if you ask me, this looks kind of beautiful. Back to the hydrobromic acid. You're going to need about 130 grams, but you don't want to add too much, so you only add hydrobromic acid until the solution turns clear, and if you add too much, you're going to destroy your product. The hydrobromic acid was added slowly while maintaining a reaction temperature of about 95 degrees Celsius. The acid was added over the course of 30 minutes and in the end we were left with this clear, slightly blue solution. The moment the solution was clear, the acid addition was stopped. We added just a little under 130 grams. In this first reaction step, we get the isothyronium salt of benzhydrol, which can be seen here. By the way, I stole this procedure and reaction from Arrowit and if you want to read the entire paper, you can find a link down in the video description. The next step was making sure that everything reacted and therefore we set up a reflux and refluxed for another half an hour. Nothing noteworthy happened and therefore I'm not going to show you the time lapse of this. It was cool to room temperature and in the end we were left with this white solid. It looked like we got a massive and solid disc of this product and we broke it up using a PTFE stirfish remover. With a glass rod I might break the flask and I don't want that. The fastest way to remove the liquid is a vacuum filtration and therefore we did one. The chunks were big and I had to break them up even more. By the way, if you want to rinse them out of the flask you can simply use the solution which was filtered off previously. In the end we were left with a lot of product and this was washed with about 200 milliliters of distilled water. The Elmire flask was already rinsed with the distilled water from before and therefore I added everything back without cleaning it. For the second reaction step we are going to need much more distilled water. About 700 grams were added. The electric thermocouple connected to the hot plate was again placed into the reaction mixture and I set the temperature to 60 degrees C. We now made 98 grams of a 46% sodium hydroxide solution in distilled water. The sodium hydroxide solution was added over the course of about 10 minutes and then we set the temperature to 85 degrees Celsius. You want big chunks of solid to dissolve completely, but in the end you are still not left with a clear solution, but with a white solution. It was still not finished, but I proceeded anyways. 80 grams of 2-chloroacetamide were weighed out. Before proceeding, we allowed the reaction mix to cool back down to 60 degrees Celsius. The chloroacetamide was added in about 7 portions over the course of 1 hour. During this time, some solid settled out because the stirfish was not strong enough, but I suspended it again in solution by using a PTFE rod. With the sodium hydroxide you first get the thioalcohol and with the chloroacetamide you later on get diphenyl methyl thioacetamide. The suspension had to be stirred for 4 to 5 hours and over the course of this time it kept clamping up again and again, which was very annoying. With an overhead stirrer it would be much easier, but I don't have one and I'm just going to work with what I got and in the end it worked out. Once 4 hours had passed I decided to stop. The mixture will have to be filtered while hot and it also has to be washed with hot water, therefore before filtering I weighed out 250 grams of distilled water. 
The water was placed onto a hot plate and while waiting for it to heat up, we filled out the rest. At first I didn't even use a vacuum because it ran through the filter like it was nothing. But once most of the product was in the filter, I pulled a short vacuum to remove the water. To wash the product, I first transferred the boiling hot water to the Erlmeyer flask to rinse leftover product out of it, and then we washed the product with this boiling hot water. I continued to pull a vacuum for about 10 more minutes to remove all of the water. Now the product was transferred to a beaker. Why you ask? Well, there's still water in it and we cannot remove it by filtration. We got 197.1 grams of still wet product, which is less than the 220 grams in the paper. There was still some floating material in the solution we filtered off and therefore I filtered this solution again, but in the end we only got about 2 grams of additional product from it. The next step is going to be fun. I dried the wet product in a vacuum chamber to get rid of some leftover water and I got rid of about 10 more grams of water, but now we are going to get to the oxidation. I don't know if the product in the paper contained more water than mine and therefore I'm still going to use the same amount of chemicals. We dissolved everything in 610 milliliters of glacial acetic acid by heating to about 40 degrees celsius. I was happy that we obtained a beautiful and clear solution without any brown or yellow stuff in it. To this solution 500 grams of 5.8% hydrogen peroxide was added dropwise over the course of half an hour. It's important to keep the temperature between 40 and 45 degrees celsius. If it gets too hot you might end up getting the sulfone instead of sulfenyl which you have in modafinil. As we added more hydrogen peroxide, the solution turned white. This might already be precipitated modafinil, but it could also be an oxidized benzhydryl thioacetamide, which crashed out because there's too much water. Occasionally we had to fill up the addition funnel because it was too small to fit 500 milliliters. While maintaining a temperature of 40 degrees celsius, we continued to stir for 4 hours. When you put potassium iodide starch paper into the solution, it turns pink because of leftover peroxide. We want to remove that leftover peroxide. I am going to deviate from the paper. I don't have sodium metabisulfites, but I have sodium sulfate, which should react with hydrogen peroxide in the same way, while not influencing the reaction. 20 grams of sodium sulfite with a T and not with a D was dissolved in 610 ml of water, and we added the solution. The hydrogen peroxide reacts with sodium sulfite to form sodium sulfate. I tested the solution again and on the top of the paper you can see that there's no leftover peroxide. The solution was stirred for another half an hour and it was then put into the fridge for about 4 hours. The finished modafinil can easily be filtered off using another vacuum filtration. Before filtering it I wanted to show you what it looked like. We got this white stuff with a crystal shape which I cannot define. Because we got those big lumps and I didn't want to splash around any products, I ended up using my gloved hands to transfer it to the funnel. To get rid of contaminants like sodium sulfate and acetic acid, the filter cake was washed with 600 milliliters of distilled water. In the end we were left with what looks like a lot of white powder. The solution in the washing bottle also looks white. To do a recrystallization, all of the powder was added to an Erlmeyer flask. I added some methanol, set up a reflux and cranked up the hot plate. Once it boiled, more and more methanol was added and in total I added about 800 milliliters. At some point we were left with a clear solution, so I took it off the hot plate and allowed it to cool down in the fridge. A lot of white stuff crystallized out, we did a filtration and I sucked the vacuum for about 5 minutes. The finished modafinil was dried in my vacuum chamber over anhydrous calcium chloride, which works surprisingly well for methanol. I filled it into a bottle and we got 65.4 grams of modafinil, which represents a yield of about 35%. This is less than in the paper, but I also used pure methanol and not a methanol water mix. There's still a lot of product in the methanol. For this reason I decided to recover some more impure product by boiling off most of the methanol, putting it onto the fridge and filtering it again. 
and as you can see this was a success as we got even more product. We got 8.8 .8 grams and this represents an additional 4.7% which is much less than in the paper. And there you go, this is how you make modafinil. Don't eat this stuff, don't sell this stuff, basically don't do anything with it except doing chemistry. I may methylate the amine group or oxidize it even more in the future to form the sulfone. Thank you for watching this video, feel free to like and subscribe and I would especially like to thank all of my Patreons because you guys make it possible to film even crazier stuff. There are even a few Patreon exclusive videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.